Second game of the round robin wrapped up and the Vegas Golden Knights grab a 6-4 win against the St. Louis Blues. And it's curious, boys and girls, I actually have these two teams as my Western Conference final matchup. And in that series, I actually have St. Louis winning it. But tonight, Vegas won. Not convincingly, I will say that, but <laughs> they grabbed the win. And it's funny because it didn't look like that at first, right? I mean, David Perron scores four minutes and two seconds into the first period off of just, I don't know, just really ugly puck management inside their defense. And yeet! <laughs> Flurry just kind of left, left to his own device. Then his own device kind of breaks down in front of him and yeah Vegas being down one nothing and Bennington just switching it on real early it just looked rough and first period just flies by and in you go to the second period hoping that St. Louis doesn't gain any momentum off of you know the earlier goal but a minute and 45 seconds into the second period Pareko scores Again, just off of really bad puck clearance, and <laughs> I got to look at Marc-Andre Fleury in this game and think, he wasn't bad, but he wasn't great. Good. <laughs> just kind of in the middle. And, and thankfully, it's a round robin. You can kink your shit out. You can figure out shit. But being down 2 nothing early, eh, not, not the best, right? Not the best. But... Thankfully, the Vegas Golden Knights get a power play opportunity in the second period, and they capitalize off of this power play, which, oddly enough, they did have a previous power play in the first period. Didn't really get much out of it because Bennington. And second time is the charm for the Vegas Golden Knights as Shea Theodore gets the goal at 6 minutes and 50 uh, seconds into the second period. And it's just past the leg of Petrangelo, um, beyond the point, and it just looked as though Petrangelo was just in the way of Bennington at that point. But Vegas Golden Knights bring it to a one-goal deficit, and just a couple moments later, it's Alex Tuck just continuing his good form since his return with the Vegas Golden Knights, and, you know, with the game against Dallas. And he scores 10 minutes and 47 seconds into the second period, and... While he scores off of the rebound, I have to really just say, like, Alex Tuck's hands and the way he fucking moves that puck and just little, little snake kind of shit was so cool to watch. And, yeah, Bennington kind of had no chance, especially within that close proximity and his, the angle that he was at. Just no way he was going to get Tuck's goal. And Tuck, continu uh, continuing his good form, a couple minutes later, after getting the game-tying goal, goes ahead and gets the go-ahead goal. At 13 minutes and 13 seconds, <sighs> again, silky hands, so smooth, so soft, like aloe vera shit, but smoother, just slithering on in to the other side of the net, and Bennington just no bueno on that regard. Although, I, it, it's not entirely his fault, right? Look at that St. Louis Blues and think, hey, guys, you just let three goals in, three straight goals. What are you going to do? Well, what they did was pop, pop, dick punch us twice in 28 seconds. So the first goal comes in the form of Pareko. Again, second period, 14 minutes and seven seconds in. Pareko just skates around everybody <laughs> and just, it's not even a wraparound. It's like a fucking soft medium wraparound where... It feels like it's going in slow motion because everybody's just wide open and Pareko just jogs it in. And I, I had to have a laugh because it's it's just the optics of it was hilarious. But 28 seconds later, it's uh, Brewer. Brower. Brewer. Jack Brewer. Shit. But the man scored. That's the important part. 14 minutes and 28 seconds. It's not even 28 seconds. 21 seconds. Jesus Christ. What a shocker. Vegas Golden Knights blow a lead. And, I, dude, it, it, this comes from Alex Tuck's kind of boo-boo where he turns over the puck. Just a really messy affair after he just scored back-to-back -back goals to bring the Vegas Golden Knights up one goal. Then just pretty much gives up the puck to hand over the lead to St. Louis. And 
you know, it would have been a big problem if this was the third period, but thankfully it was only the end of the second period. So, what a fucking period, right? Second period just, ooh, all, all those goals. Oh, we got six goals. Uh, yeah, that that is six fucking goals, kids, in one period. And, you know, I thought, goddamn, Vegas kind of blew this. I don't know if they're going to come back. They have these moments where you would think they can get this shit, but they kind of choke themselves out. But here's the funny part. Third period did not go the way I expected. Zach Whitecloud, his first ever goal in the NHL. And it is the game-tying goal in the third period, two minutes and one second. I mean, Roa just sets up this really great pass from behind uh, the goaltender. And yeah, dude, Whitecloud just zoomed it on in in front of Bennington. And Jordan Bennington had no chance at all. And what a way to get your first goal in your NHL career. And just set the Vegas Golden Nuts, uh, Golden Nuts, <laughs> Golden Knights up to a nutty potential conclusion. Yeah, I kind of nutted a little bit when it said White Cloud. I'm like, oh shit, Zach White Cloud. Oh, yes. But that excitement kind of petered out where, you know, St. Louis still kind of the pressure, you know, generating uh, chances, not enough chances, but still chances. And Vegas still relentlessly attacking to get you know a winner because they they care like you see the way these guys skate they care i know a lot of fans like myself are kind of dismissive of some of these uh, round robin games but these dudes care like they, they've been around this fucking camp they've been around each other for a long time and you could see just the the way they zip on through it's it just looks so fucking crisp and good and when you talk about crisp and good much like KFC, boys and girls. I don't want to fucking argue about best chicken places. Goddamn KFC. Shut your goddamn mouth. Is the crispness of Mark Stone, leader of men, getting the goal, the go-ahead goal in the third period, 12 minutes and 31 seconds in. And it's a great little back and forth between Stone to McNabb to Stone. And to, to see that goal go in, initially I thought it went off of the St. Louis uh, Blues player skates, but it was just Mark Stone's brilliant use of the stick, getting the puck right on in. He's like the invisible hand, just <laughs> blowing the puck on through. And Vegas grabs a 5-4 lead late in the third period, and it's only... Shea Theodore, who puts the nail in the coffin a couple minutes later, 14 minutes and 49 seconds into this third period, where the aggressive forechecking from the Vegas Golden Knights had them just buzzing around in St. Louis's defense. And it was just easy pickings from that point. And Shea Theodore just rips one from the blue line. And again, I thought some of the shots uh, that, that went in, you know, not entirely on Bennington, but I could kind of look at that entire squad for the St. Louis and think, yeah, maybe you guys should have, should have figured your shit out, you know, in, in, inside the defense, you know, kind of like Vegas, you know, don't fuck around with the puck. But what do I care? I'm a Vegas fan. I like the fact that Vegas won. And yeah, I mean, William Carrier, and I have a penalty there, but Vegas able to just... Not score on the empty netter, but grab a win, which, I mean, hey, I, I'll, I'll take a fucking win any day. Trust me. Especially with, you know, this long hiatus we had before the games, and now we have the games back. So I am just ecstatic that Vegas grabs another win, 2-0. And here's here's the thing, though. I don't think I want to shit on Jitting, uh, J J <laughs> Jordan Bennington because... I refer to this guy as Lord Biddington, okay? And here, here's, I'm going to have to read something for you guys. 32 saves on 38 shots and 842 save percentage. I mean, this man is a fucking beast. Like, I don't care what the fucking stat says today. Biddington is an animal. And if his team decides to show out, which I don't really think they did, like, I'm going to be really honest. I look at that round-robin game against Vegas, and I thought St. Louis wasn't really 
into it, especially in by, by that third period. I thought they were just kind of taking it back, maybe. But this is still a team of quality. And potentially, St. Louis can go back-to-back. -back. I mean, I have Philadelphia winning it, but St. Louis looks dangerous. I actually do have them going to the final against uh, uh, Philadelphia. So that's going to be interesting if that actually happens. I, I would be ecstatic if that happened, if my predicted um, educated guessing came true. But the reality is I'm a Vegas Golden Knights fan, right? Clearly, with all, all the fucking attire and gear and shit. But I want the Vegas Golden Knights to win. And on a night like today, where Flurry had 13 saves on 17 shots, a 765 save percentage... It didn't, it didn't really matter. Like, this this kind of win, to me, doesn't really tell me a clear difference, except the fact that, yeah, Flurry saved every shot in the third period, albeit it was only four shots, and St. Louis, when you break it down, had five shots in the first period, eight shots in the, sec in the second period, and four shots in the third period. So, not a lot to write home about, but Vegas, in terms of offense, they had it rolling, and... Guys like Tuck and Theodore scoring twice. Only good news for the Vegas Golden Knights. You know, Mark Stone coming up clutch. That's huge. Uh, and Zach Whitecloud, you know, young guy getting that confidence. I think that's only going to help Vegas Golden Knights even further. And I would imagine after tonight, Robin Lehner would get a start in the Colorado game on Saturday. So we're going to be on the lookout for that. But here's the fun thing. With the 2-0 start in the round robin, the Vegas Golden Knights have officially clinched minimum the two seed in the Western Conference. And that game against Colorado on Saturday could determine the one seed in the Western Conference. Although I will still say, I don't think seeding matters because the way some of these lower, you know, seeded teams are playing, you'd be very shocked to see like a Blackhawks team coming out, right? And they'll probably be the lowest seeded team. And if they took on Vegas, I don't know what could happen. You know, maybe they carry that momentum um, after the game tomorrow against Edmonton, right? So who the hell knows? But one seed is still yet to be determined. I mean, we still have that game on Saturday, and I am very curious to see if Vegas can clinch a one seed. And will they choke this year? I hope not. I really hope not. <laughs> I hope they win. And just piss off everybody else. I, I already know how all uh, other 30 teams act uh, you know, with their opinions on Vegas. Like, oh, you guys cheated. Uh. All right, dude, fuck you. I hope we win just so we got to just rub salt in your fucking face. But that's just me as a Vegas Golden Knights fan, kids. And you know what? If you win, I'm happy. So go Knights, go. Boys and girls, follow me at the Sky Lounge and all the links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe for more daily contents. Now, fuck off.